Welcome to Just Want a Quilt, a research podcast coming out of Tulane University Law School, where we explore all kinds of things, stories about quilting, tools, field trips, maybe some famous quilters stop by, and of course, a little bit of copyright thrown in just for fun. Elizabeth Townsend Guard, your host. I'm a law professor at Tulane University Law School and a LePage faculty fellow at the Business School, and I just want a quilt. So today we interviewed Stacy Harding. She is part of the trio um, uh, with Teresa McFarling and Shelley Weeks, um, and they do Quilt Your Own Adventure, which is um, uh, has been something they've been working on. But we really interview Stacy because um, she has a huge amount of stuff, um, and she keeps it organized. And I saw it on Instagram or Facebook, and I was like, "How do you keep it all organized?" So that is why she's here to chat with us about that. Stacy Harding from Swan, Iowa. Okay, good, awesome. Um, okay, cool. So if I have it right, I have already interviewed. You are the th- you are the th- you you yep. are the third, right? So I've interviewed Shelley and Teresa. Yep. And now we're yep. completing the the uh, you're the number three, and you're all part of Quilt Your Own Adventure. Is that right? That's right. Yep. That's right. Um, and I'm super psyched to chat with you. I am too. I'm very glad to. We finally got to connect. I know it's a little bit challenging, but you know sometimes that's the case. Yeah. Now I just want to say ahead that's of just time life. that there is somebody doing some sort of lawn work outside that I'm hoping will not get picked up. So I'm going to say we're going to okay. talk for about a half an hour in case we have to do it again because um, sometimes Sounds it doesn't good. get picked up and sometimes it does. Does that sound like a good plan? All right, Stacy. Yep. Okay, so I'm so I'm so um, distracted by your nice stash. Um, but tell me your <laughs> first memory of someone sewing or quilting in your life. I've been thinking a lot about this because yeah. you always ask everybody. I do. Um, I my first actual memory is sitting around at my mom's sister's, so my aunt's house. I know it had to been before Christmas because my mom and all of her sisters were making Christmas ornaments mm. out of just little sewing or fabric and stuffed, you know, with stuffing. And they were, yeah. they would little wreaths and uh, little snowmen and, and all a bunch of Christmas ornaments because not a lot of them had a lot of money. But we have, in my family, I come from a very long line of crafters, so... That for sewing, that would be my first memory of that. And what kind of other crafts did your family do? Uh, everything and everything. anything. Yeah. My sister, my sister for a time actually made a living. She was a, a stay at home mom, but she also made money on the side making crafts at and selling them at shows. And um, oh gosh, we even have made gingerbread houses and nice. sold hundreds of them at, really we got a yeah edible fully edible that's really cool <laughs> so crafting forever since I can remember that's really all interesting crafts. we've done it and um most of the crafting for hobby or did most of it turn into businesses like the gingerbread no most of it was just hobby my sister my sister and my aunt it was a weird thing about the whole <laughs> selling the gingerbread houses for money but it just it would just took off and and everybody wanted 20 of them and it was it was amazing but typically it's just been for craft shows if we wanted to but mostly just for fun just for fun and tell me how you got into quilting well so my aunt another one of my aunts um has been into quilting for about 20 years or so and I'd say probably 15 years ago she had a little box of two and a half inch pre-cut squares totally scrappy like not even good looking scrappy togetherness Mm -hmm. to it at a garage sale she was having so I decided I'm going to take those or buy them and um, my grandma had given me her old Singer sewing machine that it 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 wasn't a treadle, but it didn't have a pedal either. The pedal was a knee bar. Really? Uh, yeah, it was 
very wow. unique. <laughs> um, but it ran, so I, I decided I'm going to try to do this. And yeah, and I put them all together, and I didn't pick it back up again for like five years. Huh. Um, yeah. So that and was so, my. First so what made you decide to do it again? <laughs> well not to get too deep and philosophical. So my son, he is 20 and a half now, uh -huh. um, when seven was diagnosed with cancer. Mm -hmm. And I was a big cross mm -hmm. and, you know, things that I could take with me to the hospital to be with him a lot, you know, and um, just kind of do stuff, craft stuff all the time with my hands. When he was completed his treatment, I was walking through Joanne's one day and I was like, I really, really need something to do with my time. I need a hobby. And I found a book to make it. It, show, it showed all of the embroidery stitches for a crazy quilt. And I was, I've never actually embroidered, but I cross stitched forever mm -hmm. since, I mean, since I was six. Yeah, me too. I, right. That's great. Yeah. And I said, oh, I could, I could probably embroider. You know, I just got to figure out how to piece it. Right. And I kind of figured it out on my, um, as I went, how to foundation piece and just kind of hodgepodge things together. It's a crazy quilt. Um, and that wasn't really piecing. It was, wasn't really quilting either, but it, it was my introduction to it. And I have literally been obsessed and hooked since. That's and really that was interesting. About it's, 10, 10 years ago. So interesting. What do you think it, because I asked somebody, somebody else we were talking today and I was like, what makes this hobby make you feel that way? Because I feel the same way. Like we all like, like you dive in deep. It isn't like, oh, I just kind of, I haven't met a dabbler yet. <laughs> I haven't met like somebody who goes, oh, I make a quilt every, every couple of years. And then I like, you know, I don't know. I've met a few people that have said that to me, and I, I don't get it. <laughs> Maybe they don't come to me if they're like that. They're like, yeah, no. I mean, I met yeah. somebody uh, who had made a quilt that took her – she's taking, it's taking her like 20 years to make one quilt, and it's really funny because it's way huge and crazy, but um, yeah. but that's different, you know? I don't know. What do yeah. you, why do you, What is it about I mean, this craft? I have to admit that that crazy quilt is still a work in progress, but yeah. it's going to be a king-size quilt, and it's and totally hand-embroidered. Wow. But I'm definitely – than I ever have been on it, but I don't, <laughs> for me, I think the reason why I love quilting, I've yeah. given a lot of thought to sitting in my quilt room all by myself for yeah. hours. I've always wanted to be an artist, but I've never really had the talent or in my, you know, the early years didn't have the opportunity to really dedicate time to it, yeah. you know? Um, and I always tried to articulate that in my job from, from the start of working in an office, I don't build anything that lasts. I don't create anything. I don't, you know, I just type on a computer all day. And I always joke that when the apocalypse comes, my job will mean nothing. <laughs> Everything <laughs> I've ever done in my job will mean nothing. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I think I kind of dove myself into quilting because it's construction and it's art and it's tangible and it's color and all of those things together. It's you create something or you follow a pattern. I, I don't know the whole process of it. There's so many aspects of it that appeal to, I don't know, every part of your brain, I guess. Yeah, like, I think so too. It's like this yeah. fully immersive thing. Like there's all so many different steps and like the choosing and the pattern and the construction and the math and the, there's just a lot. It's a lot. And so if you don't want to do one part, you can always do another part, you know? Yeah. yeah. All right. Totally. So tell yeah, me. If you get really sick of cutting, if you get sick of you cutting, you can go iron. That's right. Yeah. That's you right. Can you can do different iron things at different times. All of it. That's right. All right. So <laughs> I'm ex extraordinarily distracted by your room. So tell me about your sewing room. Where is your sewing room? Uh, it's in my basement. Uh -huh. I have a, I think it's 12 by 20, uh -huh. room, uh, 12 by 20 foot room. It was originally supposed to be half my husband's and half mine nice. hobby room. Uh-huh. 
Um, I've since completely taken it over. He does have a little corner. <laughs> I like that. Uh, but we have plans to build a different room in the basement. Our other than this room and one other room, our we have an eighteen hundred square foot house, and the whole basement is it's full size basement. Other than the, these two rooms, there it's all unfinished. But um, so yeah, I'm in the basement alone a lot, watching TV and quilting. <laughs> Interesting. And so tell me, so I think that spaces of quilting are really interesting, whether it's like, I mean, and I've been in different spaces all the time. Sometimes it's a, exactly, but sometimes it's a big, huge room. Sometimes it's a, uh, a hotel room. Sometimes like I'm just quilting in the hotel room. Sometimes it's a teeny part of the dining room table or the kitchen table. Like we all have different times in our lives where we have big spaces, little spaces, whatever. So tell me mm-hmm. about like, like you've done a lot of organizing. Tell me about the space that you're in. What, what is there? Do you feel like there's something about the space that's important in terms of like, what, what is the meaning of the space to you, I guess? Oh, I really, re- okay. Num- number one, it is the most important room in my house to me <laughs> <laughs> for many reasons. I'm a collector. Um, and I, I think you said you were, you might post the video at some point, but for everybody yeah. listening, I am, um, the, uh, the reason why Elizabeth wanted to interview me was she saw a picture on Instagram of my stash. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so you can see it behind me. I have a very impressive stash, <laughs> right. it's very organized. Um, my sister actually came and helped me get organized, but So my room is where I keep my collections. So I collect fabric. I think quilting and fabric collecting are two very different hobbies. I think so too. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But also in my room, I collect the little toy sewing machines, the antique, the little singers and all. So that's on the top shelf. Mm -hmm. You have like, uh, you have shelves running the, the length of the room. So they're super long shelves and there's probably how many the five shelves running like I don't know 20 feet yeah yeah um, uh, well behind so the, yeah. this is 12 feet long uh-huh and there yeah and then along the 20 foot wall there's one, three and four shelves <laughs> let me show you okay <laughs> so, um yeah oh my gosh and you top, have like uh, little cubbies down below too oh my gosh oh yeah okay so <laughs> along the top of this wall I have all of the sewing machines, the toy sewing machines. So why to- toy sewing machines? And do they work? Do they sew? Oh, no. They no. don't. They're I, just... Well, I guess some some of them might. Uh, they might turn, but... But they weren't for that not... purpose. They're just like no. for pretending to sew, like as a child. Well, I mean, I, I do need to note, I, I like them because my husband and I used to sell um, at flea markets. We used to buy auctions and and then sell at flea markets uh-huh. and I kind of got because we really like vintage things but mm-hmm. not necessarily antique and um and it's sewing and it's toys and and they're something to collect and it's not a collection that can go on forever and ever and ever it'll you know eventually I should stop at some point so. oh because there's a lim- limited amount of them so you'll you'll hit a hit max is that is that what yeah. you mean? Like, there's an, a limited amount. I of... think, yeah. When were these me, toy sewing machines made? Like, when are they at their heyday? Are they still being made right now? Uh, no, I don't think so. They were. I don't know. You don't know. You just <laughs> so, like them. But a lot of them, like uh, these. I'm going to show you this one. And yeah. this is. Oh my a, gosh, it's so cute. It's tiny. It is very tiny, but it's a singer. Uh-huh. And these actually home sewing machines in the 1890s. Yeah. For women. They they would that one works. I'm, that one works. Yeah, that one that I just pulled down. I'm told that um families would buy those machines for their little girls uh-huh. so they could learn and be a got homemaker. It. All right, so learn you've got that. a lot of them. How much do you think like are they expensive to purchase? Like are they like if <laughs> yes. someone's like I want to do toys yeah. so I'm, I want to do that too. Like first of all, where do you find them? And how, how, how much go, are you in for, for these, like, what's the range? <laughs> uh, Do you not want to say? You don't want to say. You're like, $5,000. <laughs> I, 
Um, so they could range from 20 bucks yeah. if they're not in great condition to some of them that I want mm -hmm. that I will not buy are like $400. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. And and like anything else, like the the level of rarity and all those sorts of things and condition and all of that. So you are just on you're on a lookout for toy sewing machines. Have you been to that? Um, there's a uh, the antique place in Oklahoma. Isn't Tulsa's got this like vintage and antique? Uh, the Mercantile, I think, is what it's called. Some maybe. I don't know. I think I've heard of it. I have not been there. Yeah. Um, Judy and her sister Jill went, um, and it was this guy who owns it. And um, it was so funny because I was the only one watching the live Facebook, and he was very nice. It was really great. But I swear, I felt like there was going to be a murder happening. Like, they were going to get, like, murdered, and I'd be, like, on Facebook, like, being like, no! Like, <laughs> you know, like, it was just me. He's like, let me take you to the basement. I was like, oh, my gosh, this is so terrifying. <laughs> Now Too I many, really want to go to this right. place. Right. I mean, it was a really nice place, and I don't, I'm not, but it was just this weird situation, right? It was just the two of them and this guy, and like they were in Tulsa by themselves, and I was the only one watching, and it was just like, it just felt like this is just a bad, people are going to be like, why did you, and I sent them there. I'm like, can you go for me? So it's like, I felt this sense of responsibility. Anyway, that's what that's makes funny. me think of with your toy sewing machines. <laughs> Potential murder. Uh, but they didn't get murdered. They, he was very nice. No, There was no Good. murder. They're just like a regular that's guy. Good. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah. yeah. Maybe that's <laughs> like... <laughs> All right. So um, how... So we've been organizing. We've been like... It's looking mm -hmm. better. Um, how do you keep organized? Because I find like the more I use this stuff the more chaotic it gets and it, it gets chaotic pretty fast is my like it do you, sure does it does so yeah. i posted the pictures that you saw and what you see behind me happened on kind of like new year's mm -hmm. around that time because my sister finally came and helped me before that it was just total mayhem yeah <laughs> in here it and happens kind though of right be. fabric's yeah. kind of slippery it's like <laughs> i don't know it's like it doesn't want to stay put. yeah you You've got, you've got to have a plan. I mean, yeah. so my husband's concerned about having all of my fabric out and will it get dusty and will it really? get faded and everything else. But, but for me, you know, talking about the importance of the room, I need to see what I have. Yeah. For reasons, you know, everybody jokes about, oh, they've probably got three yards of the orange that they needed in their stash, but they don't know where it is. So they just go buy more. Yeah. I have done that. I, <laughs> I made a quilt once that I was literally a quarter yard short of something that uh -huh. I knew for I there I could never find it again so I adjusted my pattern and then when I was cleaning and straightening up I found two more yards of oh that fabric gosh. so yeah <laughs> so there's definitely something to be said for the need to see yeah. what you have but right. so when you walk everybody that walks into my room it's like Oh, I, I always hear it every time. Oh, it's a store. And that's how I feel every single time I walk into right. my room. Every then you've got day. everything here. Feel like, yeah. Yeah. And, and it's funny because I, you sometimes know, I mean, people... It, it, might, it looks like excess, but... Yeah, but it's not. But I, I love it. Yeah, it's so <laughs> funny because, you know, um, it's it depends on how you quilt, right? If you're going to just do a kit or you're buying for a particular quilt and that's what you do but if you're creating you need enough it's like your it's your palette so it's like what are you like you've got to be able to have enough to pull to think about it to put it away all that kind of stuff so um yep. so it, it does feel like you surround your stuff with tools of creativity let's maybe put it that yep. way you know that's definitely true I mean I'm I'm working on an Elizabeth Hartman pattern mm -hmm. right now that the fancy forest that calls for 40 right fat quarters or 40 you know assorted fabrics yeah. and i didn't have to go shopping for yeah. that i just you know did a yeah. pull here so and that's kind of my goal that you know that i don't have well because i live in swan iowa swan if you map quest that you'll see yeah. i'm out in the middle of nowhere uh -huh. kind of um, but I've lived here all my life. So I, the, the 30 minute drive to anywhere is normal for me. 
but it's also a pain in the butt. So if <laughs> yeah. if I'm out of thread, uh, you know, the gray thread that I needed or the, you know, the orange solid or something like that, I'm not going to go go on a trip to you know yeah, yeah. To it go just buy disrupts everything the thing. yeah 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 I'll just figure out what I've got in my room <laughs> yeah no I get that I get that that's yeah. interesting isn't it and it just kind of disrupts the whole thing if like you're like oh no now I need x you know that it's like you're in a zone um all right yeah. so how do you organize tell me about your organization scheme so I'm trying this is my this year I'm gonna try to stay organized this this is I'm telling my sister <laughs> because she's keeping <laughs> um so first of all you asked how how did I start getting organized my yeah. sister was Marie Kondo before Marie Kondo was Marie Kondo. nice she uh just loves to organize and for anybody that's like struggling with where do I start mm-hmm. it's not a joke put everything you have that needs organized in a pile. And like, if you're cleaning your bedroom, Mm -hmm. my sister always said, put everything on your bed because you you can't sleep sleep until your bed is clean. Totally true. So what, what she did for me that day, and I didn't have a choice in it (laughs) when she said she was coming to help. She piled everything on top of my sewing machine and my sewing table and cutting table. And she said, there, now you cannot sew, you cannot sit down and get distracted yeah. until everything is put away. Interesting. Yeah. And then she said, what you've got to do is you just got to find a place for things and put it there. If that's not yeah. where it's going to go, you know, all of your rulers, for example, right. then we'll figure it out later, but put them all where they go. So I have a drawer now. You have a drawer of rulers? <laughs> I don't is that like- what you did? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't have a drawer because I want to see what I have, but they're all together and I know where they're all at. Yes, yeah, so you can look for them. Yeah. It's funny. Yeah. It seems like there's a strategy of either making it like with the rulers. I finally went with like we have a pegboard we put up. And so the rulers I use are easy and there's only one on that pegboard. And then I put the ones that are odd. And then the ones I didn't really like, I just put them <laughs> put them away. Because like, you know, <laughs> it just felt like I'm not ready to get rid of them, but... I don't need yeah. these rulers that are, have like, they're yep. just annoying rulers that I don't want in my life all the time. Does that make sense? You know? <laughs> yes, it definitely makes sense. Yeah. So did you get rid of stuff as you were like, did you get rid of the fabric that you didn't like or fabric that you, or projects you didn't I, finish or any of that stuff? Did you prune? No. You didn't. Um, no, I, I'd say I got rid of about a half a tub of stuff. Really? Just randomness. Randomness interesting it was either didn't belong in my craft room or it was for somebody else or I don't know how I ended up with a bunch of fabric that wasn't fabric like quilting quality fabric it yeah. was like fabric and things like just that. get rid of that stuff because there's no need for it yeah like I said I used to craft a lot before I quilted I crafted and I did a I, I used to make jean bags a lot I would hmm. take and make, make them yeah. into little bags mm-hmm. um it's fun and as a crafter I would love to do that again <laughs> but I am it's it's an obsession it's it's real problem <laughs> quilting is life now so quilting I think life get see rid of... you get like I swear you've got what would we have a uh, nice stash that was a good one and then quilting is life these are good these are like <laughs> right well <laughs> you've got like good mod good mottos these are t-shirts you know what I'm saying uh, nice stash, right? Because people say that about people's mustache, right? Nice stash, yes. right? So you can put yes. like a little mustache, but it, you know, like right. with a quilt on it or something. Uh, okay. So um, when you buy fabric, do you buy, like I when I buy fabric, I buy not very much of it, I have to say. it. Mm-hmm. Take, I mean, I'm, it takes me a lot to buy a yard, I have to say. <laughs> like I'm like. Really? Oh, yeah. I'm like a quarter yard, maybe half a yard. I don't know, but I'm a bit, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But you, how much, what's your average buying of fabric when you buy fabric? Like my neighbor, she's like very much about, Judy's all about, I think she does one or two yards. Somebody else, I Tara, I think she has three yards. Like she never buys anything less than three yards, which is like to me like, oh my gosh, I can't commit that much. That seems like a lot of commitment to fabric. But what do you do? 
I would say I'm probably in that range too. Recently, because I have gotten all of my fabric organized and I know what I have now, like yeah. you know every stitch that I have now, yeah. that I'm not so much about the the three or four yards at a time. But I I don't I never buy less than a yard. Never, never buy less than a yard. Interesting. Yeah. Um, Interesting. <laughs> Yeah, it's usually, I mean, I'll be real honest, it's usually three yards. And if I really like the fabric and it's going to be a really good background or yeah. backing, uh-huh. I'll buy the bolt. Yeah, you buy the bolt. I've, I have recently stopped doing that so much, but it's not beyond me to do that. Now, I, I have to I say, def- there was a store that was going out of business and we wanted to support them. So I bought some bolts of fabric and then we got some sent to us. And there is a lot of freedom in having that much fabric of one thing. It's yeah. kind of interesting. It changes your feeling about the fabric. It's weird. It's like... How do you... What you do you know? mean? It, how does it change your feeling about it? Well, I experiment more. Um, Mm -hmm. I use it more. I'm okay if I make a mistake and I have to throw it out. Um, I also see it more because it's on a bolt so I can see that. I'm more likely to build something around that bolt of fabric than I am Mm -hmm. the little bits that are in a tub or stacked somewhere that it's, it's just more present in my life. You're cutting out a little bit, but I think I get the sentiment of what you're saying. Yeah. It's, I just feel like it's more present in my life, I guess, because I can see it. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? In a good way? Yeah, like in a good it's way. not a burden. Uh there's yeah. one there's a couple that That's are a burden. Yeah, there's about a couple all fabric. Yeah, yeah, there's a couple that are a burden. Yes. They are they do get burdensome, but now I'm oh. sending them out to the quilting army when I feel like it needs to leave the house. So, and people are making stuff. So, um so yeah, yeah. definitely. Do you have a burden? Yeah. Hi, honey. <laughs> <laughs> He comes to visit me sometimes in the basement. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can understand what you're saying about you know having too much of one, but I don't know. In my opinion, if it's a good fabric and it's one that sparks joy for you, yeah. If you know you look, and you feel it, and you hold it, and you touch it, and you <laughs> pet it, we uh-huh. all pet fabric. Uh huh. It, you then then you're going to use it. Right. So it's not a bad thing. That's for me. It's not a bad I mean, thing. I have no, true. higher section of my room mm-hmm. that is just yardage that is at least five yards or more because wow. then I know when I make, cause I have a long arm as well. Yeah. In my in outside. Basement. Um, and when I'm ready to quilt something, I'll just go to that section and find a backing. Yeah, that makes sense. That you know, I mean, so- and we, we need to do more of that. So because the backing, especially with the long arm situation, you do use a lot of fabric. Uh, there's just a lot that goes on and goes off um, in terms of that. Now, do you have right. your batting for your long arm? I imagine. What- I do. I, yep. Um, I, I am always on the lookout for the deals where you can buy the roll, the 40 yard roll. Mm-hmm. I am looking into Quilter's Dream. I know you can buy it online, but normal, mostly I've bought, bought, I've bought the, um, the big rolls from Joann's. Yeah. I like warm and natural. Yeah. Um, so warm and that works. Right. Yeah. Works a lot for me. Yeah. Yeah, And And do you like, which, mm -hmm. which, which width do you like of it? We're trying, we had a bolt and we just, we just finished it. So now we're trying to figure out mm-hmm. how wide, how wide do you, I bet you go as wide as you can. Do you go like how far, what's, what's, your, what's your width? Uh, well, I've only ever bought the 90 inch yeah. width, but I would really, I really need to buy the 108 because uh, I like big quilts. I, I very rarely will make a quilt that's less than 60 inches or 70 inch or 80 wow. inch. <laughs> now, how uh, long does it take you from start to finish to make a quilt that big? Do you think how often? How many quilts are you making? Like, you know, I'm not cranking them out like you would think. I have all the tools and the supplies, but I I, I take my time and I enjoy what I'm doing. I'm not yeah. really try not to pressure myself in it. I say I probably make about ten full quilts a year. That's a good, that's big though. That's a lot. 
well, I guess, yeah, that's, it's a little less than one a month, but I'm starting to get to the point where I, I know I've been quilting for 10 years, but there's always the dread of, am I picking the right pattern and the right fabric? And oh, and you, then you fret and you fret and you fret and you're like, oh, is this the right color? And I've, I've learned recently the joy of just do it. You know, yeah. like if you like them, if you like your fabric and you like your pattern, just yeah. do it. You don't like it, <laughs> then, then the next one will be even better. Yeah. 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 I agree. I agree. It's hard. I mean, yeah. the self-doubt is really, I don't like the self-doubt. I'm getting more that way. It's, I, I think yeah. I'm like in this like space of like, I know enough to be doubtful. That would be my thing, well, you know, and so I don't let like me tell that. you this story. Yeah. I made a quilt. Um, it was a couple years ago. I was working on it and my friends can attest to, uh, I hated every minute of this. <laughs> I hated the fabric. I loved the fabric. It was a it was a layer cake and then a yardage that matched. And I loved the fabric, but the pattern that I picked with it, I'm like, this is dumb. This is a waste of time. It's going to be horrendous when I'm done. Mm-hmm. But I was too far in and I'm like, just freaking get it done. And I just worked on it and I finally got it together. And I was like, okay, the quilt top got done. And then I loaded it. <laughs> And when I got done quilting that and binding it, it was my favorite quilt I've ever made. Really? Ever. Oh, <laughs> see, I like that story. So, so we can't, like, no was, judging. Because every, it just came together. Yeah. 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 Ended up giving it to my gra- my husband's grandma, and, oh, it was just the best. It was, so, you know, just don't put your works of project, works in progress away even though I have probably 15, don't worry about that, but put your works in progress away. If you've got momentum right now, just Just while you're working on it, just finish it, do it, zip through it. If you hate it that much, then even better, you'll go faster and not care about your points. (laughs) Right. And then when it's done, it's done. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, yeah. It's true. It's funny. I've um, put a bunch of the projects I have on the wall and so that I could like make, like Mm -hmm. they're not hidden away. Because I figure if I see them every day, I'm more likely to finish them. Do you? Mm. No. Mm. Well, I, I wish Although I... there's been one on the wall for about a year and a half now. So that, you know, now it's just like a permanent fixture <laughs> on the wall. So. Well, I would, I would def. I wish I had more wall space, which yeah. is ironic. I'm in a 12 by 20 room and every single wall is covered in shelves that it's are as cool. full as the one behind me um, of stuff. Yeah. So I don't have wall space to hang my projects on, but I do have, so that's another organization that I have. Um, every work in progress I have is in a box that's labeled and I am going, I'm trying to, every time I finish a new project mm-hmm. to finish a work in progress. That's nice. Or decide to get rid of it. Yeah. Gotta, yeah. And do you get rid of projects? Uh, not yet, but I've asked my quilty friends if they want any found and finished projects that yeah. they can off my hands, and uh-huh. I'm more happy to hand some. Hmm. Yeah, I like that. All right, so uh, do you create from people's patterns, or do you make your own patterns? Um, how does that go? I would say it's about well, up till up until recently, it's almost exclusively been creating my own patterns. Mm-hmm even if they're simple patterns, even if they're four, you know, four patches or whatnot. But um, um, I have recently found the joy <laughs> of finding a pattern that you like and then picking your fabric for it and then cutting it and then sewing it all. It's like a kit, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> which is kind of funny, but. Um, it's kind of backwards. Most people start with kits. It. Right, yeah, to, and patterns. That's true. Right. It takes out, for me, it takes out the, the dread, the fret, yeah. you know, the fretting over, have I chosen the right thing, yeah. you know, thing. So, yeah, I up until recently, I've probably made up my all my own patterns. Wow, most, interesting. Um, and, and now I'm branching into <laughs> patterns. All <our> patterns. <laughs> interesting. Um, okay, so what do you do with the bits that are less than a yard 
Um, so I have some piles on my shelves that are, they're all color coded, but they're um, fat quarter, anywhere from a fat quarter to a yard is in piles, you know, just, it's folded yeah. on the shelf. Uh-huh. Um, but anything less than a fat quarter, I, I'm working on, <laughs> I have all kinds of works <laughs> in progress. Um, so anything that's less than that, I try to go ahead and cut it up into one inch strips because I'm, I'm insane and want to do the, oh my gosh, quilt. What's the oh my gosh quilt? I don't know that. It's, uh, oh my gosh by, I can't remember her name. Um, I'm looking it up. My, oh my gosh. Right where it was by Susan Garman. By Susan Garman. Oh my gosh. Okay. Hold on. (laughs) This okay. those hold on. It's teeny tiny, teeny teeny tiny little nine patches out of one inch squares, which make them half inch when they're finished. Oh my gosh, that's craziness. Okay. And I've adjusted the quilt pattern to make it a king size quilt. Oh, that's so insane. <laughs> so it'll be a year long or a life lifelong project. Lifelong but project. That's what I do with some of my scraps, and then all the rest of my scraps that are less than a less than a quarter of a yard or, or so they just go in a big basket that okay I promise ain't my sister I eventually will sort that I promise but right now I haven't <laughs> so interesting so the oh my gosh quilt is like a all of them are that tiny it's really tiny oh my gosh me tiny, tiny. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's really interesting. And of course, maybe yeah. that's why it's oh my gosh, because it's totally insane. It is. Yeah. The I read a story, or maybe it's in the pattern, where she said she didn't know what to call it, and everybody that looked at it, all her family and friends, said the first thing out of their mouth was, oh my gosh. That's so funny. <laughs> interesting. Very interesting. Okay. We will get back yes. to the actual scheduled Oh my gosh, it's totally true. They're so tiny. Yeah. But, okay. Well, I I liked I like um Are you going to hand sew it or are you can machine sew it? Oh god, no. I don't hand sew. <laughs> this the uh, crazy quilt, king size hand embroidered crazy quilt has kind of ruined me for hand sewing in yeah. any sh- form because you've been doing the embroidery stuff. Yeah, which Yeah love and it's going to be epic when it's done but man I'm just that's a lot yeah you even put it on your bed I mean I would be afraid Uh, there's too many embellishments on it to actually be a used (laughs) quilt yeah there's buttons and ribbon flowers and everything so it'll probably go on my guest bed just to show for a while and yeah probably get put away for life I don't know interesting huh will you think you'll show it Oh yeah, I mean, I'll I'll enter it in whatever shows I can think of. But yeah, and ha- do you enter shows now? Like, is that part of what you do? Um, yeah, I've entered a few quilts in the um, the Iowa State Fair. Uh-huh. Actually, I won a blue ribbon last year. You did? I did. That is so cool. I was. I love it. it. Was, I was taken totally aback by that it. That is but so cool. It was the Bonnie Hunter. Uh, last year's on Ringo Lake yeah on but <laughs> I'll have to send you a picture of it I okay. got so tired of making the blocks that I only made half the blocks yeah and, oh god what am I now what am I gonna do right so I cheated and added some center blocks that made a giant diamond shape basically uh-huh. and it turned out real awesome so that's I'll have really to cool I love it <laughs> And Another I, example of just finish it. Just you know? finish it and do whatever you need to do yeah. to finish it. I like that a lot. I yeah. really do. <laughs> yeah, sometimes patterns could just be exhausting and you're just like, I'm done with this kind of thing. And yes. so that, that's when your creativity kicks in because you're like, okay, well, I only have this much done. So yep. now what are we going to do? And in some way that's kind of cool. I don't know. Exactly. Yeah. And you read a, re- a blue ribbon for it. So that's cool. I did. That's yeah. so great. I heard the Iowa State Fair is like a thing. You should really, like, with for quilting and stuff, you should really go because it's cool. Oh, it, true? I mean, what did they? What did they say? Seven hundred quilts were entered last year, I think. Wow. Um. Yeah, it's a it's a big, big thing. It's a. I don't know. I mean, 
I won seven dollars for my blue ribbon. You did? Yeah. <laughs> it's not like I like big that. Money. That's really great. Oh my <laughs> gosh! Because you always think, oh, that's so funny. That's so awesome. <laughs> what did you do with your seven dollars? That's the question. Uh, I'm sure I probably went out and bought more fabric. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Totally. Yeah. Um, well, this is super cool. So uh, intellectual property, let's talk about that real quick. And it's quiet. So hopefully yeah. the rest of the plane went by while you <laughs> it's like the noisiest. Well, I haven't heard a thing. <laughs> so we'll see how it picks up. But it's quiet now. Um, okay, intellectual property. So a lot um, of the patterns you're making so, are. Yeah, Tell me what I your thoughts are. I actually had a question for you on intellectual yeah. property. Um, sure. I, I had sent you a message before on you did? Facebook. Um, okay. So I bought a piece of art yes, uh, about a year ago, okay. eh, less than a year ago. Anyway, it's a very beautiful um, flower thing, whatever. Michael Milken is the artist. Okay. And the the gallery, oh, they're not owner, but the, the gallery manager told me, he said, here's a, it was a it's an original oil, mm-hmm. so it's not a print. And as far as I know, I don't know that Milken ever made prints mm-hmm. from this. The gallery manager told me uh here's an interesting tidbit he said that um if by me purchasing this original piece of work Mm -hmm. if the artist ever a print of that image he would have to get my permission and i thought that's That's totally wrong that's like beyond like that's not unless they're selling so here's how it works normally yeah so, I mean, it could be, but uh, likely no. So, um, when you buy the artwork, so the, the, we see there's a distinction. So, when I buy a piece of art, I'm buying the object. like I'm, But I don't get any of the copyright under, underlying it unless I have an assignment as part of the deal. So, if you looked at your at your at whatever your purchase agreement was for that art and it said, and we assign you copyright, then that would be true because mm-hmm. then the artist couldn't do anything with it unless because they, they couldn't even make another version of it or make copies of it because you'd hold the copyright. But in most situations, the art artist isn't giving the copyright; they're just giving the ob, the art. That's why you get a whole bunch of different art, the same kind of thing because they have the, they haven't given you the copyright. So maybe, but it would really just depend mm. on sort of what that agreement was in terms of selling it so you'd have to look at that to say it should have it you can't just assign you have to have a copyright an assignment of copyright has to happen in writing so it doesn't happen just by the transfer of the work itself it would be on the sale agreement okay so you can look at the sale agreement and see i mean if that's true that's really interesting and i'd love to sort of learn more about it but it also could just be somebody well i'll let you know if it does say that yeah but I'm going to guess it probably doesn't. I, have I don't a know. Feeling. Maybe. Who knows? You know? Like, maybe. You never know. <laughs> yeah. Like, right? Like, maybe yeah. that's the whole, that was like, maybe that's why they were bragging about it is because he was like, you know, that was part of what he was doing. And that's cool. Oh. You know? Right? Who knows? I would say. Interesting. I don't know. Yeah. Everything's possible. Okay. I mean, that's the beauty well, now, of this world, you know? Yeah. Well, now I know what to look for. I will go back and read the paperwork. Yeah, send me a copy if you find it and if you don't know. So, I mean, like, you know, it's interesting. So Yeah, cool. And Thanks. is he still, is he still alive? He's not oh, alive. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's he a, is. yeah, Michael Milken is a up and, I don't know, up and coming. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> he's, okay, there's of, another one that's yeah. not, okay, there's a bunch of Michael Milken, so let's see. <clears throat> oh, he's born. He's nineteen in 1964. Is that right? Mm-hmm. That guy? Sounds right. Yeah, sounds right. Park West Gallery. Yep. Okay, look at that. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> There's a guy. Read more. Awesome. <laughs> okay. He's accomplished quite a bit. Oh, look at He's got flowery things. Is that what you bought? It's like a flowery painting of his? Yep. He does these real... incredible paintings of flowers. Yeah, but it's not, um, uh, it's not real, like, the. there's a whole big modern movement right now with the, I don't know, kind of impressionist. Yeah. And light and everything else, and his are mm-hmm. a little more real, you know. Yeah, but they are. But still vibrant colors. Ah, oh, I'll send you pictures of those, too. All right, they're, cool. 
about two of his paintings. Interesting. <laughs> Well, yeah, so I don't know. Maybe he did. Maybe he didn't. Who knows, right? I don't like, know. I'm glad know? I asked you, though. So yeah. good. Okay, cool. Awesome. Uh, what else? So you make a quilt. Do you care if somebody else sees it and is inspired by it and makes it yourself, makes it too? You hang it like someone says, oh, I'm going to make my Bonnie Hunter quilt look like yours. Are you flattered or mad? Oh, I'd, I, would be, I would be really flattered about that. What if they made a pattern of it and sold it? Would that bother you? Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. That right. would make me mad. Um, yeah. I mean, if I, if I could, if I had the time to be a full-time quilter instead and do that as my job, yeah. I would be not, but no, I mean, I love to inspire and, and when I can, I've taught many friends who are now obsessed quilters like yeah. me. I've taught how to quilt right. and I love, but I would be. I would not be happy if one of them, not one of my friends, but if somebody t- took my version of on Ringo Lake, for example, and yeah. tried to make a pattern and sold it, nah, I don't know. That'd be cool. It crosses that line. That's interesting, yeah. that, that line for you. Um, tell me a little bit about um, your first, how did you meet uh, Shelly and Teresa? We all worked together, actually, at the... The last office I was at, I, I left and got a different job now, but um, we all work together. Actually, so the way, it, <laughs> the way it transpired, I started a quilting bee, which, and what it was, was uh, <clears throat> I, I was inspired many years ago to try to get together and sew with fellow quilters because I didn't have a community. So I had this idea in my mind where if I got 12 ladies to be in this bee and every month somebody is the pattern picker and they pick a pattern and they send the pattern out to all the 12 people in the group and each person makes two quilt blocks and sends it to the pattern picker that pattern picker would end up with 24 quilt blocks and at the end of the year everyone will have received 12 24 quilt blocks and have be able to make their own quilt right so I brought that idea up to a friend at work who I also quilted she's not there anymore but she said oh I have the, there's this other gal that just started and I think she's a big quilter can she join and I was like oh I don't know about new people I don't know and okay well that's Teresa and now we're like like <laughs> <laughs> and then Teresa was talking about that or talking about quilting or something like that at work. And Shelly overheard her and said, Hey, I made a quilt top like four years ago and I don't know what to do with it. And Teresa said, what? And so she said, bring it over. We'll quilt it. And then they'd been friends. And I knew Shelly from years before I didn't know she wanted to sew. And it just kind of transpired just the. Very you know, cool. Overhearing, yeah. Cool. Overhearing the quilt talk that's really cool and so tell me what you guys you've been uh quilt your own adventure uh tell me how that works and what you guys are trying to do with that well it's kind of on pause right now we haven't posted anything in a while so our idea was to start a blog and share our quilt thoughts and you know quilty goodness of anything yeah um kind of a blog authored by three people that way one person wasn't that was, I like that to, right that's really nice yeah. actually that's a lot less, lot less pressure I know? we think so well then we decided right at front almost right out of the gate we said we're going to do a quilt along uh-huh. which which I think turned out to be a little bit more it's exhausting it, it, more of a job yeah than, you know yeah post done every week right um so we kind of ended, we finished the quilt along, which by the way, check it out, quiltyourownadventure.com. We uh-huh. did a, a silhouette quilt along. Right. Not really cool. All, yeah. all of them did. Um, but one of my students just- are, one of my students, Katie, is doing, um, we talked with Shelly, and she's doing a silhouette, um, Hans Christian Anderson, um, you know, the cutouts that he did. So she's yes. been doing that, um, and she's got it, she's got it all now. She's got to come over and do the um, the quilting part, but she's she's really oh that's um, awesome. Yeah. So she blew I'm it so up. I'm so glad. Big. Did she use the blog as a reference? Yes, she did. Um, she totally did. And we talked to Shelly, and we talked Are more you there? about. Yeah, can you hear me? 
I'm here. Oh, now I yeah. can. Yes, uh-huh. she did. Did she, she did. use it? Yeah, she as did. A reference? She totally did. Um, and we credited you guys with it. And so she took and she she blew it up big. Oh. And um, it's really cool. And it's one of his, he did wood cuttings. Did you know this about Hans Christian Andersen? He did wood cuttings that are not the same as the, the, the fairy tales. Um, and they're all in the public domain. So she's doing that as a project for me and writing a paper about it as well. Um, about awesome. the copyright status of Hans Christian Andersen and also learning to quilt. She never quilted before, so she's done the applique part, and now she's got it. And she's, it's really pretty. It's blue, very so- solid colors, and very big. It's like huge. It's like the size of a human. I think I've seen. That's good. Yeah, I like big quilts. Yeah. But, um, that's that's wonderful. I've seen yeah. some pictures on Facebook and stuff, but I. Yeah. I think maybe now I remember Shelly mentioning that, but that's that's wonderful. Yeah, so, so it's been really fun to watch her. We had to find a, um, we found a um, old transparencies, like they have transparencies in the classroom yes. now, but like we needed a big one to put on the wall, and so they found it, and the, the law school was like, I don't think anybody's used this for like 15 years, right? So they had to find <laughs> light bulbs for it, we got had to figure out, it was so funny, and they're like, well, you can just keep it in your office, <laughs> It's like one of the mint things that I have in my office. It's ridiculous. So, That's yeah, wonderful. it's great. Yeah, it's That's been really so fun. So it was inspired by the Fearless Girl. Oh, yes. Right. That braces. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's, that's so, wonderful. Yeah, so I think it's really cool. And and our goal with it is to sort of, we've been highlighting you guys, but also um, that you could take images that are in the public domain because that was one of the things that we talked about um, with the uh-huh. octopus. I think there was an octopus issue, right, of whether you could use uh-huh. an octopus. Um, and so this is an example of taking an image that's clearly in the public domain and being able to blow it up big. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I would – anybody that wants to try to draw the tree swing silhouette that I I drew, uh, the – so our the blog was kind of an exercise in the same style but three different ways to do it. Yeah. So – did her a little wall hanging and she used the fearless girl Shelly did the it's like a bigger than a bigger than a baby quilt but like a toddler quilt I guess size mm-hmm. and she did the puss underwater and then I did a queen size quilt and it was a hand drawn picture nice so of a with a tree and then the trunk and then a tree swing yeah and it thing, so yeah very nice well it's fun it's really fun um, all right, so you've put it on hold. Why have you put it on hold? Uh, we just kind of, after the quilt along was done, we were not inspired anymore to post. Oh, <laughs> so interesting. We, interesting. I am now, and I think we're going to get back to it. At least I am. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's going to be structured or guided like that, that quilt along, but it'll be, you know, thoughts on quilting. Interesting. <laughs> You know, it's funny because a lot of people are like, no, I get it. Day jobs can be good and bad. Mm -hmm. But so many people are like, oh, if I could only just quilt for my job. And I think like, I don't know, it makes it your job. Like some, there's some, part of the joy is that it's not your job. You know, like, I I don't know. That's the way I feel about sort of this last year and a half. It's like, I love to quilt. And then when I feel like I'm in the mindset of like, oh God, I have to go quilt. That's terrible. Like, I don't want that in my space. I want my space to be just like, this is for fun and I love it. Now that just may be me, right? Like I have a job I like and all that, blah, blah, blah. But um, I don't know. I think you have to be careful when you turn. I mean, I think about the... um, the uh, the gingerbread houses, right? Or suddenly you're making hundreds of gingerbread houses and, you know, is this really what you want to be doing? You know, I don't know. So, uh, you know, I don't know. There's always a lot of people. I, that's my thought. I don't know what you thought thinking about, but I don't know. I'm glad to hear that take on it. I guess I had not equated it to the gingerbread houses because you're right. We hated it by the end of yeah. oh, we did it. Yeah. It's been 10 years since we've ever made a gingerbread house because we hated it that much. Right, right. But- I'm really, but, you know, I don't know. I would love to quilt full time if I could. If I, yeah. my dream is to quit my job and open a quilt store and have classes and sell fabric and whatever, you know, design patterns if I could. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, right. But you're right. I mean, there there is that fear of. Obligation, right? Well, you know, to, taking what you love and now, now it's a chore, right? right. It's like with the what like with the blog it's it was 
it was really fun. It was a great idea to talk about it, but then it was like, okay, no, shit. I've right. got a post. Exactly. Sorry, I just said that. That's right. Um, exactly. You know, I've got a. <laughs> it crap. becomes an obligation. I, I have right? to post by Wednesday. I'm, I've got a deadline and. I, I don't know. I don't, I really honestly don't know if I didn't have a full-time job and I, you know, didn't have that pressure of the full-time job, then I, I think I would need pressure of something, you know, you need (laughs) a job, I think, you know, and for now, anyway, I would need and I don't know I like to dream that I would be able to love it still yeah but, but who knows I don't know yeah I mean that's the real question right like are you still there yeah can you hear me you, you cut out for just a second yeah can I can you hear me? yeah okay cool yeah uh yeah I don't know I mean I really don't I mean I think that that's something really like again I think about there's a lot of people that I talk to that are like I want to quit. And the other thing is that I'm seeing is that just because you quit your full-time job and you quilt all the time, there's now this new economic pressure that whatever you do has to be bringing in money unless you're like don't have to bring in money. And that's great if that's the case. Mm -hmm. But if you do, then there's the kind of new pressure of like, okay, how am I using my time to bring in economics to, you know what I mean? Like it just changes it, I think, Mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. Yeah. It's funny. Yeah, it so. definitely would add the dynamic of, yeah, not fun. The not fun part of the not business. Not fun part yeah. of it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I'm trying to make sure that with this project that it beca- that it stays fun because I've kind of blended my day job and my hobby in a weird way. So we were talking about the next project. Of, I mean, we'll, we'll be doing this one for a while. The last project I did to, to was 10-year project. So, like, we have projects don't go Ooh. away. And we're still doing it. So, but we were talking about, like, maybe, like, puzzles. Like, doing, like, the intellectual property of puzzles. Because it's, like, the opposite of quilting. Like, you put it together and then you just take it apart. Huh. There's, like, no reason That's to do a puzzle, right? I don't know. Yeah. So, and I don't really do puzzling. So, like, I'm just thinking, like... <laughs> The other one we were thinking about is, like, tattoos and, like, the intellectual property of tattoos. But my students are really afraid that I'll get, like, way overly tattooed because, like, you know, I've gotten so deep into the quilting. They're like, yeah, you can't do a tattoo project. <laughs> I'm like, you probably It's very sweet. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid of permanency, so it would be fine. Um, anyway. All right. So last, so uh, as we wrap up, any kind of one or two words of wisdom for those of us that are still trying to get organized in our sewing spaces? Don't take it too literally and seriously, I guess. Um, yeah. I mean, def- definitely do the initial, pu- literally put it in a pile. <laughs> yeah. The nice, neat basket that you can put a lid on or anything. Put it in a pile that is in your way. And then go through it a little, little, all, every little bit, all the little bits need sorted and find a place for it. And you decide if you're going to keep it or not. That That's the yeah. first step of getting organized. Now, when you pull fabric, let me ask you one quick question connected to that. Because uh-huh. this is where it gets messy. So when you pull fabric, like you've got some really cool pinks and, and oranges and reds behind you. If you were pulling it for a, a quilt and you were like yeah I'm gonna not gonna use that one I'm gonna use this one I know really down below too so pretty (laughs) right the prettiest pretty um do you put it back immediately or do you have a pile that you put stuff back I have a pile that I put stuff back in fact I have two piles right now right uh I have a big bag right there yeah of newly purchased things or things I've pulled out that need sorted yeah um but no, I mean, y- yeah, you're going to have piles of fabric out, but the, the key is when you decided that you're not going to use that fabric, yeah, I'm done with it. And you really, really are done with it as in, you're not going to need another strip or something like that for whatever project you've worked on. Yeah. But done with it. You've got to take literally just five minutes and put it back. Yeah. Even if, uh, not in the right color place as long as it's 
put away. Yeah, that makes sense. I've found yeah. that's easy. There is a drawback to putting things away. <laughs> I, while working on the newest Bonnie Hunter, um, Good Fortune, mm-hmm. I calculated all of this one block unit that I needed and exactly down to the square of everything that I, more that I needed. And then to try to stay organized, I put everything that was already done away to get it out of my way. Yeah. And then I got all discombobulated with my calculations and I ended up making like 40 extra blocks. Oh my gosh. To make. <laughs> so that's why I mean about like, don't be, you don't need to be really anal about keeping everything picked up, but yeah. just like when you're mom's old, mom's old adage, when you're done with it, put it away. Yeah. I am in my whole life, in my 42 years, this is the first time in my life I'm able to say I'm doing that, uh-huh. <laughs> but it's helping. That's so great. That'd I be love my it. Head. That'd be my tip. <laughs> That's very cool. Well, this has been so delightful chatting with you. I really do um, do appreciate the time. And, uh, yeah, I'm inspired by your organization. I'm working on it. It's better. It's really, like even the law students, when they came up, they come over on Friday nights to do work with me, which is great and weird and fabulous. Mm-hmm. Um, they were like, hey, it's looking better. <laughs> so- <laughs> it keeps you when you walk into the space, it keeps you inspired. You know, you, why do you, why does everybody love to go to the fabric store? Because it's, oh, look at all the potential. That's true. The potential. It's true. Yeah. All that potential. Well, very yeah. cool. Well, well again, thanks for talking with me today. This has been super, super fun. Oh, this is great. Um, do you need to review it before we post? No. No, no I think there it. was just one part. I'm going to check to make sure there's no weirdness on the early part so we don't have to re-record that. And if so, okay. we'll just post. So. Sounds awesome. good to me. Fabulous. Take care. Have a good day. Thank you too, Elizabeth. Bye, yeah. So you've been listening to Just Want a Quilt, a research podcast coming out of Tulane University Law School. And I'm Elizabeth Townsend Gard. If you like this podcast, keep listening. Also, we have a Facebook group. Come join us. We talk about a lot of things. We also have an Instagram account. And of course, most importantly, I really hope you get a chance to quilt today.